Hello everyone, Gareth here and welcome to a brand new video. In today's video I want to talk about my spreadsheet that I started for this upcoming expansion, Knights of the Frozen Throne, where I just listed pretty much every possible archetype of potential decks uh, in the next expansion. I think it is, I ended up with around 56 or so potential archetypes. I didn't really want to focus on all the different meme decks, I wanted to focus on actual decks with potential. So before further ado, let's jump right into it. So here's the spreadsheet I wanted to talk about in this video and before I get into it, I wanted to let you guys know that you can actually vote. I will cover all the different decks that I will talk about in this video in the future, upcoming weeks, maybe even months. Uh, I will talk about one deck like every single day so I will make a new video every day where I just cover one of these decks and you can basically let me know in the comments like what kind of deck you would like to see first and the comment of the most likes I will I will always check these likes daily or like the I will always check the comments daily and if I see for example yeah, I want to see um, Ends of Shaman, right? And if that comment has the most likes, I will probably n focus on Ends of Shaman in one of the next videos. But overall, I will still go over all these different archetypes, but it can take up to a month or even longer before I cover an archetype that you maybe want to see. So, so let's get right into it. How did I start this off? Um, here are all the currently played decks in constructed standard format. For Druid we have Agro Druid, J Druid and Big Druid. And I rated the tier of the deck according to competitive viability. So this is why J Druid is tier 1 for example. The reason why J Druid is tier 1 is because if you go, for example, to a DreamHack event, which is last year standing, almost every strategy evolves around banning Jade Druid or just being ready for Jade Druid because it is a very powerful sweeper deck, it hard counters every other control deck and you expect almost every player to have it and Jade Druid replaced Questrog. Questrog was like the most respectable deck for tournament and band strategies before it got nerfed. So this is why Jade Root has a tier 1 re relevance. The deck power level is also tier 1. Uh, it's like uh, more like an in-depth process how you rate the power level of a deck. For example, Jade Root on ladder might be tier 3 just because there's so many token shamans, secret mages, um, Argo Druids, Pirate Warriors, you know. If you only face those even Murloc Paladins, they're all counters to Jade Druid. And so in that environment, Jade Druid would be tier 3. But the power level of Jade Druid is still tier 1, if that makes sense to you. So we have Argo Druid, Jade Druid, Big Druid, and all the other Druid versions are just not relevant at this point. For Shaman, we have Jade Ends of Shaman, with which I also ended up winning a cup in the last two months. Uh, token Shaman, which is like uh, uncontested tier 1 and the the list, the best list is super well established. So many people were successful with it. At DreamHack Summer, I think around 5 people got into top 8 with the exact same deck list. Uh, Elemental Shaman is currently tier 3, but people still wanted me. I did this on stream, by the way. People still wanted me to put it in just because some people have occasional success with it like strife grow at seed story cup and yeah it got buffed by blizzard with the jade spirit change so next we have paladin with agro murloc paladin midrange murloc paladin i think those two decks are rather different i think agro murloc paladin is way more consistent in terms of draws uh, but it Midrange Monarch Paladin is much much better at outlasting uh, control decks. Uh, control Paladin slash Ends of Paladin. Some people don't play Ends of in their Control Paladin list, but this is also a very relevant deck. 
but besides these two decks, the other Paladin versions are not very relevant. Uh, Mage, we have Burn Mage, very like many different versions for Burn Mage. I all covered them as Burn Mage, like the Gunther Mage variants with Doomsayers, without Doomsayers. Some people play Secret Package, but still have the Medivh and uh, Freeze Mage and Secret Mage. Other Mage archetypes are not relevant at, at this point from a competitive standpoint. So tier 1 and tier 2 um, at least tier 2. Some people wanted me to put Secret Mage as a tier 1 deck. I think it's definitely tier 2 just because of the overall power level of the deck. It is not as strong as a tier 1 deck in, in my opinion. Priest, Dragon Priest. I didn't want to put them as quite tier 2 because it's Priest. Uh, the way how Priest is designed as a class with all the class spells, I think it's very hard for a Priest to become a tier 2 deck, but Priest is still one of the top 5, top 6 classes actually, um, together with Rogue. Rogue and Priest are kind of like the, I believe the 5th, no, the 6th and 7th spot of the uh, power level of classes, at least right now in Ungoro. And we have Control Lyra Priest, so it is viable silence priest is i think silence i put silence priest as tier 2 because i think it is the power level of the deck is just better the way how it's played than a control priest or a dragon priest you can just lose to so many random things with those two archetypes anyways we have rogue we have jade rogue as tier 3 deck it is viable it is kind of like as viable as big druid Right now, Miracle Rogue is a tier 2 deck and Quest Rogue, I, I just put in Quest Rogue because it was really dominant in Unguro for such a long time, but now it is tier 3, actually it is tier 5, so let me change this quickly. So what do we have next? We have Taunt Warrior and Pirate Warrior, both are around tier 2. Pirate Warrior could arguably be, be tier 1, just because of the overall power level. Uh, it's just a very, very strong list. There's a lot of counters to it, obviously, in the game with Golakas and the uh, Cidic Swamp Ooze and the uh, Gluttonous Ooze and all that, Harrison Jones, but the power level of the deck. I mean, it got nerfed with the Buccaneer nerf, so I wouldn't quite put it as tier 1. It's very hard for the Agro deck to be a tier 1. The list has to be really... Token Shaman is tier 1 just because the list is really perfect. Uh, Warlock. For Warlock and Hunter, I had to put them in just to complete all the nine classes so the only somewhat viable list we had in Ungoro or a viable archetype was the Blood Bloom Lock that Sivka played for a short period of time but he stopped playing it in the end and for Hunter we had some people play Midrange Hunter but Hunter and Warlocks never really reached top 8 of uh, relevant tournaments um, I also made this quickly because it's relevant for the future which classes have the strongest classic set and it was crazy to see how powerful the Mage Classic set is. This is very relevant for every rotation and every upcoming exp expansion because we can put in like around 15 cards from the Classic set or base set. They're like two different sets, but I still call them both the Classic set. And just from Mage in actual viable decks with the Frost Balls, Arcane decks, Fireballs, and just like really a lot of good cards from the Mage. So Priest, it's always important to keep in mind the Priest is the worst class or has the worst class cards. So the quest power level, this is relevant for the future. I will change this a lot. Um, for now, we have Warrior as the strongest quest because the quests have gotten quite a little bit of support from the expansion so some quests might become viable like the shaman quest for example it got two very powerful cards in this expansion so the mage quest as well the mage quest actually got so much that it might surpass the warrior quest and just the progress to see that and if my prediction is correct would be very interesting to see because Warrior hasn't gotten really anything for the Warrior quest, just the Lich King, but besides that, like, really impactful cards to make this quest even more powerful, not really anything, right? And Mage has gotten a lot of stuff, and right now Mage is arguably the second best quest, and if the Mage quest will surpass the Warrior quest in viability. 
So and then the shaman quest can also surpass like, you know, uh, I I still haven't like done this like perfect. I did this just quickly. So because we have to evaluate them as soon as the expansion comes out. So hero cards power level. Yeah, I did this when they announced the first five hero death knight cards i couldn't actually continue this um yeah i will do this i, I usually continue this spreadsheet on my stream so you can check that out uh, i don't really want to do this now this is also not very relevant for this video what is relevant it begins here like knights of the frozen throne potential deck so by the way if if i'm missing some archetypes or some decks that you think I should put in as well you can let me know in the comments like I'm up for everything I'm pretty sure I missed one or two decks but I should have covered most of the relevant decks like 99% for sure so we have burn mage as a t1 deck and I was obviously thinking about how the new cards might impact that deck for example this is what you're playing right now and we need to have a reason why to not play it right burn mage is tier one why should we stop playing it, right? Are new archetypes stronger? Will they push it out of the meta? We will see. So for now, what you are getting for the mage, burn mage archetype is Jaina. I think it is a very viable new finisher, which is very interesting. I'm not quite sure if this will be uh, will the, will replace Alexstrasza or Mediv, but it will be interesting if it replaces Mediv because then we burn mage is not weak to weapon removal if jaina would be an alternative win condition or if instead we just add jaina as an additional late game finisher so so we have a little bit more greedy uh greedy version of burn mage so if the meta slows down a little bit we don't have that much aggro but from my experience over the past few years we always had at least 40% aggro decks on the ladder so at least on ladder we can't probably play it too greedy so another interesting card is glacial mysteries uh, which is an 8 mana spell which synergizes very very good with the mediv um, just after to get an additional 8 mana minion on top of just filling the board of secrets so you have a very powerful turn after the mediv so this is um, a very good card and a potential card for the deck list and but the way how the deck list would change is that you have to include much more secrets in the deck so maybe you would play the secret package and not play as many board clear so very interesting to see so the frozen clone also like a potential card for the deck and besides that we didn't really get as much but this is like very powerful so i when a class is getting like a powerful deck is getting a few cards but if those cards are very powerful very le relevant then uh, they have a high impact on the deck so burn mage might potentially still be a tier one deck with this expansion i think that a lot of the expansion will evolve around the new hero cards because they are all very very powerful and a lot of them actually fit in existing tier 1 decks the mage hero card or the shaman death knight card right the, the shaman death knight card just fits in the current token shaman list so it would just push the deck even further so i wouldn't be surprised for example if token shaman will be the most dominant deck in the upcoming expansion so the next thing we have like i have to speed this up a little bit just because i have to cover so many decks and i don't really want to go too much into detail because i will cover all these archetypes i just wanted to give you like a quick rug rundown in what you can expect from my youtube channel in the upcoming weeks um, I will not make one of these videos every single day like I will make a video every day or I will try but I will not make like a um, video where I talk about a new deck every single day, day I might mix it up so freeze mage is a currently tier 2 deck it gets really nothing and every other class or every class is getting the new hero cards which gives you automatically five more armor which is better than just healing and this nerfs freeze mage even further and not getting any buffs 
and every class is getting more heal makes the deck even worse so I, I can predict this to be at least a tier 3 deck after the expansion. Secret Mage is currently tier 2, arguably tier 1, a lot of people think it's very very powerful, a lot of people playing it in tournaments, a lot of people playing it on the ladder, it's very hard to counter even if you play it off secrets and we are getting Jaina, Glacial Mysteries has the biggest impact for on in the Secret Mage deck just because you already run so many secrets and this is a huge buff you play simulacrum or like you get simulacrum I don't think this is a card for secret mage but it is like a potential card because you can like copy Kirin Tor Mage and you can copy zero mana five fives and arcane giants like it might fit in the deck I don't think you have room I just wanted to add every card that has potential in the deck doomed apprentice just for tempo frozen clone is the new secret like it gets a huge buff. It is like an almost tier 1 deck that gets huge buff. So potentially tier 1 deck, right? So Secret Mage, you should gotta watch out for that. Uh, and then I went, these are like the currently, current tier, like best decks for Mage. And then I went to look into potential archetypes that get buffed with the expansion. For example, Dragon Mage. It's currently a tier 5 deck, like it's super trash tier, but we're getting Cinderagosa, we're getting the, the Bone Dragon, we're getting Jaina, so maybe a tier 4 deck, maybe a tier 3 deck, you gotta test it out. Um, Freeze Tempo Mage, uh, just because we're getting Cold Raft, we're getting Doom the Apprentice, Breath of Cinderagosa, Jaina, Ice Walker, like a lot of stuff that freezes, so we have like cards for Freeze Tempo Mage, Maybe it is a viable deck. Uh, I will t uh, try it out uh, for sure. Maybe it is a tier 3 deck, who knows. Quest Mage is currently a tier 2.5. It is not as popular to be a tier 2 deck, but it is probably slightly better than a tier 3 deck. Um, it gets Glacial Mysteries, which is interesting because you can cycle out your deck very quickly, right? And you can play a very defensive secret package. Um, like you can play Vaporize, Ice Barrier, Ice Block, you can play Mana Bind, which is definitely relevant, and you know, Spellbender, <laughs> it's like you can go super defensive with your secret package. It might be a potential card, who knows, Simulacrum, some people are hyped for this card, because you can copy your Giants, you can copy your Sorcerer's Apprentice, um, the Ghastly Conjurer, I'm not sure if it makes the cut, but it is like a nice card that is defensive on turn 4, you can play minions, you can fight for the board, and you get generate spells, uh, besides just playing cards like the Kabbalist Tome. Uh, the Cold Ref as well is a potential card, because you can freeze and draw cards, which, which might be good, so... A lot of people think it might be the new tier 1 deck, I'm not quite sure yet, so, but it should be at least tier 2 with all the buffs it is getting, especially if the meta is slowing down. And even if it doesn't slow down, Quest Mage is an okay deck to fight aggro decks. Ends of Control Mage, yeah, currently tier 4, it's slightly better than Dragon Mage for sure. We're getting Zindragosa, we're getting Neutral Dragons, we are getting Jaina. The new dragon is the Bone Dragon, Jaina, Glacial Mysteries, Simulacrum, who knows, maybe a tier 3, because we're getting like a lot of stuff that makes the deck more powerful. Elemental Mage, uh, I used to play this just because I want to play Jaina. Uh, I test tested it out, it is currently I would say around tier 3 for sure, and we're getting Ice Walker, we'll probably not play it, but it is a card that they introduced, it is a 2 mana elemental and there's very few playable 2 mana elemental so it's very relevant for sure Jaina very powerful card this card alone might push an entire archetype Frozen Clone Breath of Sindragosa not quite sure if Breath of Sindragosa is good enough but Elemental Mage might be a tier 2 deck just because we have now an actual win condition in, in form of Jaina Priest um, Priest has actually the most archetypes I think I wrote down around 10 we have currently Dragon Priest which is a tier 2.5 deck, Ob we're getting this Obsidian Statue which is a very powerful new defensive 9 mana card, great synergy with Ends of as well, Embrace Darkness, Shadow Ascendant, Skulking Geist which is a very powerful tech card versus Jade Druid, Bone Drake, uh, it is a Dragon, 
and it is a Defer Dominion, so very nice synergies there. Interesting for Curator as well. Cobalt Scalebane, another Dragon, and Happy Ghoul, a very powerful 2 drop for all Priest versions. So potentially tier 2, potentially tier 1, who knows. Um, Control Priest, just a lot of buffs. Control Priest, tier 2.5 as well. Happy Ghoul, very, very impactful. I tried to put them in, uh, in thick, the cards that are like super impactful for that deck. Epic Goal is a very very powerful new two drop for every priest versions, and yes, I know you it does the cost doesn't get reduced if you are not actually damaged and you don't heal yourself for actual life, but that's completely fine for priest if you don't take damage turn one turn two you're in a good spot anyway so um you really need this to be a a, a zero mana free free when the opponent is playing a Pyroto Warrior and is damaging you. Very, very, very powerful 2-drop. We never actually had a super powerful 2-drop for a Priest. And it's scary to see how powerful Priest might be just because of this card. So we have Shadow Reaper, Anduin. Like, interesting, <laughs> definitely. Um, it's not as powerful as some of the other hero cards, but still a powerful card. Archbishop Benedictus. I think this is definitely also relevant in Kazaku's decks because Kazaku's priest is lacking uh, at the second Shadow of Death. We don't have BGH, we don't have Entomb, so you really lack the heart removal and Shadow Reaper Anduin is like an AoE Shadow of Death, which is really, really important and really powerful. Also heal on top of it for Kazaku's priest. Kazaku's priest might be a really real deck. Archbishop Benedictus. But if the meta is super super slow, then it's like the card is absolutely bonkers. Um, if it's fast, then the card is obviously not very playable. Obsidian Statue fits in like in every priest archetype, I would say, except Silence Priest. Embrace Darkness, I don't think this card is too bad. It's like a 6 mana um, mind control. Shadow Ascendant, Spirit Lash. I don't know if Spirit Lash will be played in any priest deck just because of the lack of spell power. Aqualite of Agony, I don't think this card is too great, but it might actually be better than Farseer, just because you get the heal um, after you attack. Uh, Farseer is usually a very bad turn 3 play, if you play against Control, because then it doesn't do anything. But Aqualite of Agony, you can always play and then you get the heal afterwards. Prince Kalisif might be a potential card for Priest, because Priest plays very few good two mana cards. It's actually the only class that plays rather weak two mana cards. You play the Radiant Elemental and Shadow Visions and Shadow Pain. But besides that, nothing too crazy. So might be a potential card as well. So Control Priest might be tier 2, tier 1. Science Priest currently tier 2 in terms of power level. On Leather it's probably tier 3, tier 4. Not as bad as tier 4 but not as good. And I'm counting all the Basically, with Silence Priest, I'm talking about all the combo in a Fire Divine Spirit Priest versions. Like, even the, just the control decks that play that. I'm covering with this archetype all those. Um, Eternal Servitude, it's an interesting card because you can get additional Humongous Razor Leaves for 4 mana on the board and then you silence them, so pretty powerful. Rattling Rascal, and you don't play that many minions in the deck, so it's very relevant. Rattling Rascal. It's a card that is good with silence and happy goal. So maybe still tier 2. Verse, this is as you can see very few relevant cards. So if other classes get buffed and other archetypes are getting buffed and you are not getting anything, then the chance is very high that you're becoming a ver or dropping into a verse tier. Combo Priest, tier 4 currently with... Um, Combo Priest, what kind of Combo Priest? Obsidian Statue, Eternal Servitude, Shadow Ascendant, and Happy Ghoul. Combo Priest, I actually split them because it makes sense, right? A Combo Priest is the Divine Spirit, Inner Fire Priest, but without the um, Silence package, you know, because without Humongous Razor Leaf, just playing Divine Spirit with a lot of cycles, so it is pretty much two different separate archetypes. Highlander Priest, very relevant. Highlander OTK Priest. Uh, we don't really have that kind of deck being played and we are getting Anduin, you can make very cheap combos with it Obsidian, um, Statue, Happy Goal, Eternal Servitude maybe tier 2.5 like you play this with Kazakus and uh, Raza 
and if you play Anduit, Anduit, you can play, for example, just for a two card combo, you can play um, Prophet Velen into Mind Blast, and that is like, what did we calculate? It's um, you reset your heal power twice, so you deal eight damage, eight damage plus. 10, 18, and 20 damage. So you hero power, you hero power for 4, no, you hero power for 2, and then you play Prophet Valen, and then you hero power again for 4, and then you mind blast, and then you hero power again for 4. That's 20 damage with a 2 card combo. That sounds very powerful and very viable. So you can just include one mind blast and one Prophet Valen and Anduin, and then you have already a potential. Obviously, you need the Raza as well, but a potential 20 damage finisher combo, which is super interesting in just a normal Highlander Priest, and Priest was lacking the, the, the actual win condition, you know. Usually, you just grind out your opponent out of resources. So, very a potential 2.5 deck, or more, higher. It's very high as an initial tier if you don't have a deck like this in the game, it's just for a new deck. It's, it's crazy good. Highlander ends of Dragon Quest Priest, <laughs> currently tier 4. Um, yeah, just all the stuff combined in the deck. We have Happy Ghouls, Anduin, Born Dragon, Shadow Ascendants, you know, just make it work, baby. Quest Priest, just without all the crazy stuff, just focusing on as many definitely minions as possible. The Quest Priest is around tier 3 right now. Maybe, I think, more accurate would be tier 3.5. It not, it's not quite tier 4 ish because it is almost viable but it is not as good as a tier 3 deck like Big Druid. So we get Bone Dragons, Happy Ghouls which is a very powerful 2 drop, uh, Shadow, Shadow Grave Digger just gives you like a lot of death red minions, might be a tier 2 deck. Resurrect Priest, East Big Priest is currently tier 4, if it is even tier 4 it might be tier 5. You get Happy Ghouls, Eternal Servitude, where you can just, you know, resurrect whatever you want very, with a very high chance. Shadow Essence, so you, Obsidian Statue, you can just try to build it. Maybe like tier 3 deck. Ends of Control Priest, just standard Ends of Control Priest without like Quest or Highlander. Uh, Obsidian Statue, Anduin, Happy Ghoul, Shadow Sense. Eternal Servitude, Spirit Lash, Bone Dragon. I'm actually, I forgot to add Arthas because when I met the, mate, the when I covered Priest and Mage, I didn't have uh, the knowledge of all the new cards. So Arthas is something we can add in uh, to all these um, classes. I will go over this more in depth when I make the um, individual videos, but this is just more a focus on the archetype. You shouldn't pay attention too much on all the cards that the deck is getting. I will go into this further later. Radiant Elemental Maligos Velen Visions OTK Priest. Um, yeah, whatever um, that is gonna look like, it might actually be a very viable 2.5 deck. So the idea is to play Shadow Essence and always summon um, Prophet Velen or uh, Maligos and you can play also Radiant Elementals and you, you just go for OTK combos with with Mind Blast and Smites but you can also resurrect them after they die with the Eternal Servitude, very interesting deck. So a lot of archetypes for Priest. <laughs> Druid ha was Agri Druid here too. We are getting Fate Spinner, which is very powerful, Druid of the Swarm and Crypt Lord. We It's currently tier 2, it's getting quite a lot of buffs, but they're not as impactful on the deck. So they're very like similar cards and the cards you would cut for them are also like on a very similar power level. Um, so maybe still tier 2 because of all the control decks also getting a lot of buffs. Might be tier 2, still, Agro Druid. Jade Druid is currently tier 1 and we are getting Ultimate Infestation, which is in terms, in a nutshell, the most powerful card of the expansion. And we are getting Druid of the Swarm and Crypt Lord, so definitely tier 1. Auctioneer is not cycling out, so they haven't announced any Hall of Fame. So there's no reason for Jade Druid to not be tier 1. Yes, I know that the um, 
the neutral me six mana card. Like I have to learn all the new names again. Uh, what's the name? The Skulking Geist is a tech card against J Druid, which is very relevant. But it doesn't change the fact or doesn't change the power level of J Druid. It's the same with Pirate Warrior. Golaka Crawler being in the game doesn't change the actual power level of Pirate Warrior. Yes, you will play Skulking Geist to, to beat J Druid or to face J Druid. And yeah, J Druid will probably react in terms of just play, play, building the deck greedier with maybe a Cane Giants, who knows. Uh, it's gonna be a very interesting uh, make, uh, reaction. Uh, but finally we have a card that we can tech against Jade Ruid, before that it was just stupid, you just lose if they get a good draw. So is Big Druid is currently tier 3, we are getting Hadronox, Malforion, Ultimate Infestation, Fate Spinner as a defensive board clear, Spreading Plague, Drill of the Swarm, Crypt Lord, Lich King, Arthas, are you kidding me? A bunch of new cards, like as you can see, with after I did Druid, I, I had information of all the upcoming cards. So probably tier 2, tier 1. Uh, I'm looking really forward to playing more Ramp Druid. Ends of Druid is just as a separate list. It wouldn't focus so much on the, you know, you wouldn't play Deathwing and all these super big minions in that deck. It's currently tier 5, if it's even tier 5. We're getting Bone Dragons, Arthurs, Lich King. You would just play Lich King on all slower Druid versions, except J Druid, maybe, probably even J Druid, just because of the bot clear potential. Malfurion, Hadronox, Ultimate Infestation, Spreading Plague, Druid of the Song, Crypto, pretty much the same. It's hard to evaluate how powerful this deck will be. So and then we have like a separate maybe Hadronox Druid, Taunt Druid question mark. We don't really have this deck yet. Uh, we're getting a bunch of new taunt minions, Hadronox, Malfurion, Ultimate Infestation, Spreading Plyad, Rid of the Song, Crew Plot. So you would not focus so much on the Death Rattle. The interesting thing about Hadronox is that it has Death Rattle, so it has good synergy with Enzov, but the deck might be too greedy, so you might just focus on playing a lot of taunt minions. And what would be very cool to see is the interaction between Ancient of War and Hadronox. If you would get Ancient of Wars back, that would be insane. So you can just easily focus on just playing taunt minions with Primordial Drake, Curators, Ancient of Wars, you know, just play taunts, not definitely minions, and play Hadronox as a finisher. So very cool new archetypes to Druid for sure. So we have Shaman next. Um, the potential decks are, like existing decks are Jade Enzo Shaman. It's currently around tier 3, I would say. We're getting Sral. I thought about this quite a bit, and I think Sral can be played in every Shaman archetype. Sral works really well with the Jade cards, because Jade cards usually have a natural high mana cost, but a very weak body. So, for example, Jade Spirit would be a very good evolved target, and you have a second body as well, and you don't really need the totems in this archetype, so why not just change your hero power for a better one, and you heal yourself, which you obviously always need as Control Shaman. Arthas, very nice new powerful minion, um, Lich King, Bone Dragon, and Brulok. So maybe Curator, because we have a good Moloch 2 drop now in Shaman as well, which I really like. It's very cool to see. Curator was so much fun to play in Paladin because of Hydrologist. And now to have another cool 2-mana uh, Moloch in Shaman for a potential Curator is very cool. So maybe Tier 1? Who knows? Has a lot of potential. Token Shaman is currently Tier 1. We're getting Sral, as you can see, a, in thick color because it's very 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 powerful it's like made for the archetype and Kyostasis might be good as well because we play a lot of tokens and Kyostasis is very good for um, for totems because you don't really care if the totem gets frozen if you play a primal fin totem and you buff it plus three plus three for two mana you have suddenly a three six primal fin totem you don't really care if it's frozen because your opponent really wants to kill it the same goes for mana type of flame totem very powerful card in token shaman and Brulok seems to also be a, a very good new 2-drop. Shaman was lacking good 2-drops. Ice Fishing, uh, just to draw it maybe. Who knows? Like, draw is also very scary in uh, aggressive decks. Sha uh, Mage aggressive decks are usually running Arcane Intellect. And this would be like a 2-mana draw card. But besides Brulok, uh, we can't really play too many. Maybe we play Finja Package now. 
instead of the doppelganger to make the deck more smooth. Uh, we're getting Rattling Rascal, great synergy with Evolve as well. Zero Knight, Chain Gang, um, also it's kind of like a better Feral Spirits for Shaman, good for protecting Flame Tongue Totems and the other Totems, and Hildnir, another good free drop again, you don't really care if your board gets frozen. Tier 0, it's like Token Shaman is Tier 1, one of the best decks in the game, and it is getting huge buffs, so why should Sh Token Shaman not be the best deck in the game? I don't see any reasons for it right now. So this is my potential deck, like my vote for the most meta-defining deck from all these 56 decks, just on paper. Elemental Shaman is currently tier 3. Um, we're getting Snow Fury Giant, where a lot of people are hyped about. I don't really know how this will push the archetype, just because, yeah, it's we don't really get much other stuff. We're getting Sral and Corpse Taker, and that's about it. So, very few new cards. Token Shaman is getting huge buffs, so maybe even tier 4. I don't really see a lot of potential for Elemental Shaman, I will play it regardless. Freeze Shaman, Pog Champ, Tia, Morabi, Sra, Kriostasi, Voodoo, Hexa, Avalanche, Icebreaker, Brolock, Hildni, a bunch of new cards for it. Might be a tier 3 deck, who knows, we're about to find out. Taunt ends of Freeze Shaman, uh, it's like a hybrid. What I figured when I thought about it, because Freeze Shaman doesn't really have a, a finisher, so you basically have to combine the archetype with something else like elemental like jades like taunt minions uh, just to have a finisher like the de deck doesn't have a win condition you can't just freeze the opponent's board till he concedes so we got the lich king office curator maybe burlock voodoo hexer sral drakari icebreaker cops taker kind of like a taunt freeze shaman might be a tier 3 deck so quest shaman got a huge buff it is currently tier 4 but burlock and ice fishing don't underestimate it it's definitely S tier extreme hyper. So much better than token as you can see. No, it's it might actually be a very viable deck. Um very curious about to see that as well. So Paladin so Hungry Crab might be back in the meta. Paladin has Agro Murloc, Paladin which is tier one, Desperate Stand, uh which is a cool new little card. Um, it helps you just protect your um, divine ship minions and your war leaders, yeah, but it might still not make the cut. Dark Conviction, this might re replace equality potentially, because it can buff your weaker murlocs like Tidecaller or yeah, your 1 mana 1-3, one for example, into a 3-3. Free free. Uh, and it takes out big minions like Edwin Van Cleef, so it might fit in the deck. Righteous Protector, Copstaker and Phantom Freebooter. Because you already played um, Dread Corsair in the aggro version, so maybe you play Phantom Freebooter now to pull patches. It might be tier 2, just because it's not getting any impactful cards. So, and whenever a deck doesn't really get anything huge, then and the other decks are all getting buffed, then it might drop in uh, power level. So, Midrange Murloc Paladin get, is getting, it's the variant with Curator, it's like the Hoy list. If you're interested, I think the Hoy list is the most dominant version. Uh, it's getting Corpse Taker, which is very powerful new card. We will have like a lot of impact on the game, I'm pretty sure. Especially in Paladin and Shaman, it's getting the Ufa, the new Death Knight. It's pretty powerful. Dark Conviction and Desperate Stand might still be tier 2, tier 1. Who knows? It's not getting a lot of buffs, but it's a very powerful deck. Control Ends of Pala is, is tier 2. Currently, but we're getting Uther, Blackguard, Righteous Protector, Dark Conviction, Lich King, Arthur's Corpse take a lot of buffs on. Might be a tier 1 deck now, Control Paladin. I'm also super excited to play this deck. Hand Buff Paladin is currently tier 4. Now we're entering the, the potential archetypes. We're getting Serenite, Chain Gang, Corpse Taker, Hildnir, Righteous Protector, Uther, Chillblade, Blackguard, Righteous Conviction. Might be a tier 3 deck. With Whenever you see plus, it's like a deck to be potentially higher than tier 3. Are good, but it requires a lot of deck building and testing. So, 
The next we have is Agro Divine Shield Paladin, the new archetype there. Pushing with the expansion with all the Divine Shield synergies. It's currently around tier 4, I can imagine. We've seen some Agro Divine Shield decks already. It's getting Bolvar, Light Sorrow, Holding Commander, Desperate Stand, Righteous Protector, Dark Conviction, and Corpse Taker. So it might be a tier 3, tier 2 deck. I wouldn't be surprised the, to it to be one of the more dominant aggressive decks in the beta. Non ends of control, and then it replaces, let's say, Agro Berlock Paladin just because it's beta. But it's impossible to say before you actually play it. Non ends of control paladin is around tier 2.5 around it's, it's like weaker than ends of paladin um it's getting uter arthurs arthurs blackout conviction cops taker i just wanted to s split all the different archetypes so again might be a tier 2 tier 1 deck it's just a less greedy deck because i can imagine it being very difficult to fit in all the greedy cards in ends of pala so you might not play ends of and just play uh, Arthas and stuff. Quest Pala is around tier 5, uh, one of the worst decks in the game. And But we're getting Desperate Stand, Dark Conviction and Righteous Protector, so it might be tier 4, tier 3. Keep in mind that one card is usually enough to make a deck from broken to unplayable or from unplayable to broken. I think other way around you probably need like 2 or 3 cards, but just look at uh, Reno Lock. Before Reno rotated out, it was tier 1, the strongest deck in the game. It was before Angora. Just Reno being gone and not having alternative heal made the deck one of the worst decks in the game. Just one card. Uh, yes, a lot of other cards changed, uh, rotated out as well, but they weren't as impactful. They were all replaceable, but Reno was not replaceable. So, I would be surprised if Quest Pala just gets like enough cards that it's viable. But just the way how the deck is played i don't see it being like too powerful even if it's viable but it might be a tier 4 deck so for rogue we have jade ends of rogue it's currently around tier 3 i would say we're getting valira doomerang shadow blade roll the bones and bone baron uh, so it might be a tier 3 deck still just because these cards are not that impactful they might be more impactful that that i'm thinking i i, I should make it at least plus uh, if the meta slows down, it might be uh, at least tier 2. Uh, but if there's still a lot of aggressive decks, I don't know if this is enough to fight the aggressive decks on the meta. Just because Rook doesn't have any life generation, even though the weapon is really powerful. And Rook doesn't have any board clear still. Miracle Rook, currently tier 2, we're getting Valyria, Lillian Voss, Doomerang, Shadowblade, Rune, Forge Hunter. Like, decent cards, but not too impactful. But Miracle Rock is already as good as it is, so probably still around tier 2. Might be a little bit weaker, a little bit better. Uh, Agro Rock is around tier 3, I would say. The problem with Agro Rock is you run out of steam very quickly. It's very similar to Aggressive Hunter. Shadow Blade, Doomerang, Runeforged Hunter, and Plague Scientist, so might be. It's hard to put this into a tier, but the thing with Agro Rock was that it was. If the meta is very aggressive, Rook was very good at gaining the bot control against other aggressive decks, so it was kind of countering other aggressive decks, so might be like a good deck then. Warrior, we have Taunt Warrior as a tier 2 deck. We are getting the Lich King, Zero Knight, Chingang, Bring It On, pretty nice heal card, Blood Razor, Forge of Souls, Skull King Ghost, and which is very very relevant so taunt where is gonna beat jade Druid. so it might be a tier one deck right we're getting the lich king so night Gang is pretty powerful replaces the blood of brave uh the skull king ghost uh, a jade Druid tech card and the warrior deck doesn't really have a six drop so it can fit in the deck and if you beat jade Druid, then taunt where can beat agro decks as well and might beat all the other control decks so it might be a tier one deck i wouldn't be surprised even though you're not getting that many things but the few things we're getting are very impactful next thing is pirate warrior tier 2 maybe tier 1 it's hard to evaluate it's very powerful it's probably the most powerful aggressive decks in uh, in terms of power level phantom free booter uh, is a very powerful card and it will complete the list because currently pirate warrior has around 27 or 26 core cards and you're running like a lot of flex cards like spellbreaker mortal strike you know hydras and 
this Phantom Freebooter make, will make the list even more powerful and even more clean. And Hildnir might be a potential free drop that you play because it's a free mana 4-4 four, four with no drawback. Uh, might be tier 1 in terms of power level now. Might make like the card. So power, aggro decks seem very powerful. All the aggressive decks are getting buffs. Um, aggro Druid, Token Shaman, Pirate Warrior. Yeah, even like new Divine Shield Pala. Uh, so it's gonna be interesting. So aggressive decks will be in the meta, guaranteed, which is nice. I like aggressive decks in the meta. I think they're very important. I like the fight between control and aggro, uh, but they never have to be too um, far apart in terms of power level. If you wanna, if you give aggro decks something strong, you have to give control decks also the tools to fight aggro. So ends of control warrior. Um, it's a new archetype because we have Rot Face, a Garage, Bring It On, Dead Man's Hand. You just have infinite resources. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Forge of Souls, Lich King, Bone Dragon, Arthurus might be a tier 2 deck. A lot of people are hyped for this archetype. Tempo and Rage Warrior, it's a new deck. Like it is a very old deck, but people haven't played this for years. So we're getting Rot Face, Garage, Death Revenant, Valkyrie Soul. Claimer, Blood Razor, Animated Berserker. It's almost impossible to say. It might be another aggressive deck that is playable. Might be a tier 2 deck. Kitoon Warrior. <laughs> yeah, it's just to go over all the archetypes. Um, Deadman's Hand, tier 2.5 maybe. Just because with Deadman's Hand you just you can get Kitoon and Doomcaller and you know all the Kitoon buffers back in your deck. And you already run a lot of cycles in Cartoon Warrior, so just this card alone might make this deck even more powerful. So yeah, we can make add no now no just normal Control Warrior without ends of, but yeah, let's let's keep it like this for now. I might add this later. So for Warlock, we have Control Lock. We only had the Bloom Lock, but people will maybe change this now to, and not play it and just play like normal control lock we have blood river Gul'dan, treachery despicable dreadlord unwilling sacrifice defile drain soul lich king arthur's corpse taker seems legit i would say so might be a tier 2 deck um, it's hard to say right but it's on paper it has the potential to be a very powerful deck quest lock um it's, it's unplayable but we're getting Blood Queen and Howl Fiend, so it might be tier 5. <laughs> I don't know, it's it's a potential archetype, right? So Zoo is currently around tier 4, unfortunately, it's not playable. Tier 3 would be playable. We're getting Sanguine Reveler, a new uh, one drop, Howl Fiend, Keening Banshee, a potential 4 drop for the card, and Icarus Veteran, another very powerful one drop. Might be tier 4, 3 with room upwards, might be tier 2. Um, could be a good deck again. A handlock is getting defile and unwilling sacrifice. I didn't wanna think about all the cards handlock is getting. Like I have to think about it how you, we would build handlock now. So those are like the potential worker lock archetypes. And the last class we have is hunter. Midrange hunter is around tier three. We're getting corpse widow and bear shark. Might still be tier three. Um, it's the only class I wanna give minus. Might actually be worse than tier three. Might be even be less playable than before. Ends of Hunter, the archetype they were pushing, uh, is around tier 5. Uh, we're getting Cops Widow, Deathstalker, Rexa, Professor Putricide, Toxic Arrow, which is like pretty bad, but you have to play it. Exploding Bloodbed, also really bad. But nothing else, like really. It's really, really bad, might still be around tier 5. And Quest Hunter, which is around tier 5 as well. Getting like Arcarus Veteran, maybe it's tier 4. You know, it's like not super trash. Let's make it tier 4. Arcus Veteran, Prince Khaleesi, like all the Prince cards actually work in Quest Hunter, which is kind of funny because you play so many one drops in Quest Hunter. If you go for the super hyper aggro version, you can play all three princes in the deck, but there's maybe not even good. Uh, yeah, so Hunter it seems to be by far, by far the worst class in the expansion. Um, yeah, some things I have to test is like for Hadronox and curator is gonna be very powerful so that's it for today's video man uh, quite long just to talk about what i'm gonna make videos about in the future i really hope you guys enjoyed today's video i was very excited to make this one 
and I'm really looking forward to the upcoming expansion and as once again you guys can vote just type in the comments which archetype you want to see first I will cover all of them over the next two months or so and um, yeah if one comment gets a lot of likes the one with the most likes I might cover this deck first and yeah if the deck you don't want to see doesn't get like upvoted I will still cover it eventually so it's a win-win thanks so much for watching guys love you all to death and see you guys next time